Hey guys, it's Daniel. Welcome back. The following is a clip from my interview with Steve Albini regarding the making of In Utero, where he goes into detail about how the album was made both musically and the politics behind it. If you want to see the full interview, the link is available in the description box below. All the interviews on my channel are original. I'm the one arranging them by myself. The best way to help me continue to make these videos is to subscribe to the channel. With your session, if I remember correctly, you guys recorded 14 songs. 12 got on the record. Sappy and I Hate Myself and Want to Die were not included. Do you know why those two songs were not included on the release? Uh, not my call. Yeah, I, I didn't. I wasn't involved in those conversations. Mm -hmm. I hear you. There was also a, a song, one of Dave Grohl's songs, Mar Marigold, that yeah. ended up being used uh, as a B-side that was recorded during the same sessions. Did you record the Marigold um, record? Recorded the basic recording of it, but the the greater production of it, that is the um, overdubs and the mixing and everything, Dave Grohl did that as a sort of a side hustle with Bob Weston as the principal engineer. Bob Weston was there with me the whole time. Um, he was there to make sure that if there were technical problems that we could get stuff fixed on the spot. And it was very helpful. Um, it sort of cemented our friendship as well, working in that kind of an environment. My skill set with uh, recording drums developed over the years by recording the loudest and most aggressive drummers out there. I was able to use a fairly normal approach that is close mics on the drums, distant ambient mics to capture the room sound. My approach to the drum kit is not to try to record the individual drums as isolated sounds, but to record the whole of the drum kit in the set. I've always thought of it sort of as a kind of bully's piano, you know, huh. like you wouldn't try to record the individual strings and hammers of the piano and then reassemble them in the mixing stage. You try to capture the sound quality of the whole piano and present it that way. You can shift the emphasis one way or the other using mic placement or technique, but the, the net effect of it should be that um, it should evoke the sensation of listening to a single instrument. And that's the way I've always approached the drums is you might have a mic that's special, that's specifically for the bass drum, but you're not recording the bass drum in isolation of the other sounds. There's a microphone that's recording the snare drum, but that microphone is also hearing the rest of the drum kit in the ambient environment, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. I knew that in their position, Nirvana were going to be badgered by other people wanting to glom on to their success and wanting to siphon off some of their credibility for themselves and that they want that there were going to be a lot of people leeching off of them for my own peace of mind and for their peace of mind I wanted them to know that they didn't have to worry about me and be confident that I was going to do a good job without any of the distractions of the celebrity lifestyle or any of that sort of thing